Hey guys, Dan here with Battlefield Curator, and we're going to go over why you should own an M1A. If you don't know what an M1A is, it's a semi-automatic version of the U.S. military's M14 battle rifle. Now, the M14 was used in military service as a standard service rifle from 1958 till 1964. It got replaced by the M16. Before we go into the M1A, let's go back and find out where its roots actually come from. This is the M1 Garand, and it was designed by John C. Garand and issued as the standard U.S. service rifle in the late 1930s. This rifle was used heavily in World War II and the Korean War by the U.S. You would know this as the greatest battle implement ever devised. Now, the M14's roots come from this guy right here. The semi-automatic rifle is the world's first semi-automatic rifle to be a standard issue military rifle. So, it fires eight rounds from an end block clip. So why should you own an M1A? Well, one of the first things that I like about the M1A is its history. It derives from the legendary M1 Garand, like we mentioned previously, uh, and also the M1A, going back to the M14, uh, had its roots uh, planted during the Vietnam War with U.S. service members. Uh, during the Vietnam War, this rifle was used very early on, and essentially... Uh, it got replaced by the M16 and M16A1. The M14 goes, you know, even further into the future um, because its strengths were witnessed during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars when not only the M14s were used as designated marksmanship rifles, but you also had the M21s and the M25s, which were pretty much sniper variants of the M14. So... Uh, this rifle has seen combat use uh, all over the world and in different engagements. So the second reason why some people like the M1A and the M14 is the caliber it fires. It fires the 762 by 51 or the 308. So essentially the 762 by 51 was designed to replace the 30 odd six which the M1 Garand fired. The uh, 762 by 51 became NATO standard. And so that caliber is very widespread around the world. You can find it uh, in the U.S. in just about every gun shop. It's very common. Its uses are definitely great for hunters and um, competition shooters. So, yes, we all like this 762 by 51 here. So, have you ever mag dumped 762? Reason number three why people like the M1A and the M14 is its design. It's got this sleek wood stock, 20 round magazine, designed with a 20 round magazine. I mean, there's 10 round magazines out there. You can't really go too bad with it, you know. Uh, you, it's not too bad to load the magazine. You just gotta get it in there properly, and once you get used to it, you get used to it. Another part of its design that people really like is the adjustable rear sight back here little peep sight and a front blade sight for accuracy um, you know it's got the safety down here where you flick it out uh, so when you're firing you just pop it like that some people would say this is the American muscle car of firearms so yeah this is definitely a very sleek rifle to have sleek to own it looks beautiful uh, hanging up or when you take it to the range it turns heads now another reason why people like the M1A platform is because it's very accurate. Uh, so, like we said before, this rifle is used in a lot of competition shooting. Uh, it carries its lineage from the M1 Garand, which was also a very accurate rifle. You're talking, uh, you know, this the Talladega Marksmanship Park. People shoot M1s to 600 yards, and those shot groups are really, really tight. So. The cartridge and the platform combined makes it a very accurate rifle. These came back into Iraq and Afghanistan wars because of the longer distances that U.S. soldiers had to engage the enemy. 
So yes, very accurate indeed. So another reason why people really like the M1A and M14 is it's very customizable. You can get uh, customizations to put a scope on here. You can get uh, a different stock. Some people like the synthetic stocks. Uh, they even make them with shorter barrel lengths. Um, the synthetic stocks have all kinds of rail systems on there. You can put all kinds of attachments and they're just, it's tactical, you know? You've even got like sniper stocks that are just more designed for the person that wants longer range accuracy uh, for competition shooting and whatnot. You can even put an original M14 stock on an M1A just like this one. Original M14 stocks have this little cutout right down here for the selector switch. Yes, the original M14s were select fire, but the M1As are semi-auto. Now, also going back to customization, uh, current M1As in production do not have a bayonet lug. You can go online and you could find a flash hider with the bayonet lug so that you can make your M1A look more like an M14. Well guys, that's it for the video and that's why I think you should own an M1A. In my opinion, uh, this has been a battle rifle that I had pretty much set my sights on uh, after getting an M1 Garand. And uh, I got a hold of this one, so it's a birthday present from my lovely wife. Thank you, babe. And uh, hopefully you guys can get your hands on an M1A just like this and enjoy it. Well, don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, Battlefield Curator. And as always, be sure to learn history and curate history. Make it a great day.